Hello friends. Glory be to God. Greetings to you from the Life Church Vizag in the life giving name of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. I consider it as a blessing to bring forth this short message through this video to you. Today I would like to share the word of God from the book of Joshua chapter 5 verse 13 to chapter 6 verse 2. Joshua chapter 5 verse 13 to chapter 6 verse 2 the scripture goes like this and it came to pass when Joshua was by Jericho that he lifted his eyes and looked and behold a man stood opposite him with his sword drawn in his hand and Joshua went to him and said to him are you for us or for our adversaries so he said No, but as commander of the army of the Lord, I have now come. And Joshua fell on his face to the earth and worshipped and said to him, What does my Lord say to his servant? Then the commander of the Lord's army said to Joshua, Take your sandal off your foot, for the place where you stand is holy. And Joshua did so. Chapter 6. Now Jericho was securely shut up because of the children of Israel. None went out and none came in. And the Lord said to Joshua, See, I have given Jericho into your hand, its king and the mighty men of valor. Let's pray please. Dear Heavenly Father and Eternal God, we thank you Lord for this uh, wonderful time and opportunity. Lord, thank you for your protection in these troublesome times. Thank you for the scripture you have given to us today. Bless this scripture for us, Lord. And Lord, speak to our hearts and lives today from this scripture. As you speak to us, help us to hear from you, Lord. We don't want any man's wisdom to be revealed, but we want your wisdom to be revealed here through this scripture. And Lord, as you speak to us, help us to be renewed in our spirits and minds. Have your way in us and have your way through us, Lord. We give all glory and honor to you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Friends, after Moses was dead, Joshua was commissioned to be the leader of the children of Israel. Under the leadership of Joshua, the children of Israel were brought into the promised land. After getting into the promised land, they had to fight many battles. And here, the context of this scripture is that they were getting into the first battle in the promised land. As they were getting into the first battle, Joshua had a divine visitation. Not only Joshua, in the Old Testament times, many men of God had such visitations. When they had divine visitations, they were so blessed from those divine visitations. Many times those divine visitations end up as victories in their lives. Even this divine visitation in the life of Joshua blessed him with victory after victory, victory after victory. Not only Joshua, those victories were the victories of the children of Israel too. So this uh, divine visitation was a great divine visitation in the life of Joshua. So I want to talk to you today a message titled Divine Visitation and Devotee's Victory. Divine Visitation and Devotee's uh, Victory. As I told you in the Old Testament times, Men of God used to have such divine visitations now and then. But in the New Testament, we are more privileged than those saints in the New Testament. Because when Jesus came into this world, He came into this world as an Emmanuel God, God with us. He is with us all the time. In the book of Matthew, chapter 28, the last chapter, the last verse, Jesus spoke to his disciples as he was ascending to heaven. He said, Lo, I am with you always, 
to the end of the age it was a promise from jesus that uh, he is with us to the end of the age and uh, as he was ministering in this world jesus also promised uh, that uh, he would pray to the father and the father will send another comforter called the holy spirit and the holy spirit uh, will abide with us forever that's what jesus said if you look into most gospel chapter 14 and verse 16 there jesus said like this i will pray the father and he will give another comfort another helper that he he may abide with you forever so we are more privileged than the old testament saints because jesus is with us as emmanuel and the holy spirit is with us as a great helper and comforter to us that's a wonderful experience god has given to us in the new testament as new testament believers my friends as those uh, saints uh, had those uh, divine visitations as i told you they were so blessed from those visitations many times those visitations uh, ended up as victories in their lives this incident uh, teaches us many principles uh, so that we can be victorious uh, in our faith lives let us look into those principles so that uh, we can draw those principles from that incident uh, and be victorious in our lives let us uh, now read the 14th verse of the key scripture the book of joshua chapter 5 uh, verse 14 joshua asked the, the commander who appeared to him are you for us or for our ad- adversaries so the commander said like this he said no but as commander of the army of the lord i have uh, now come and joshua fell on his face to the earth and worshiped and said to him what does my lord say to his uh, servant you see joshua fell on his uh, face to the ground that was uh, a humble worship from joshua here in this incident the first principle that joshua was observing is that he had a humble worship in the presence of god as the lord appeared to him as the commander of the lord he fell on his face to the ground what a what a humble worship in the presence of god there by joshua humble worship my friends when we think about worship and when we talk about worship we need to understand that worship is not just a physical activity of course it is a physical activity it is not just a physical activity but we need to understand that worship is more than a physical activity and it is not just a lip service but worship is something more what the book of joshua is in the old testament the same is the book of uh, ephesians in the new testament you can see both the books and you can see the same content almost the same content same kind of content uh, in both the books we see the believers inheritance in the book of joshua and we see the believers inheritance in the book of uh, ephesians we see there is a big warfare in the book of joshua there is a spiritual warfare in the book of uh, ephesians like that uh, we can see both the books uh, same in their content and if you if you look into the book of ephesians uh, chapter 3 verse 14 paul says like this for this reason i bow my knees to the father of our lord uh, jesus christ and there even paul was saying that uh, he bowed his knees uh, in the presence of god that was the that was a humble worship from the life of paul too when you worship the lord we need to have that humble nature in our lives my friends even when jesus spoke about worship he said those who worship the lord should worship in spirit and truth and we need to have this humble humbleness in our worship it is not just physical activity and worship goes beyond time and uh, space and at the same time uh, it goes beyond physical activity 
worship is uh, submitting ourselves to the lord worship is uh, committing our lives uh, into the hands of god worshiping is pouring out ourselves in the presence of god pouring out our hearts in the presence of god if you look into one of the old testament scriptures uh, in the book of, in the first book of samuel 7th chapter there's the there the children of israel were going into the battle against the philistines and before that the children of israel had a defeat from the hands of philistines so now they are afraid of getting into that battle again again is the philistines so the people came to prophet samuel and samuel was telling them i will pray for you and i will pray for the situation and he summoned all the children of israel at a place called mispa let us look into the scripture the first book of samuel chapter 7 verses 5 to 10 i am reading verse 5 now samuel said gather all israel to mispa and will i will pray to the lord for you so they gathered together at mispa drew water and poured it out before the lord and they fasted that day and said there we have sinned against the lord and samuel judged the children of israel at mispa you see here samuel told them that uh, he will pray for the situation and at the same time when the children of israel gathered together at this particular place called mispa they drew water and uh, poured it uh, before the lord it is a it is a symbolical act of submitting themselves it is a symbolical act to say that we pour out ourselves that we pour out our hearts in your presence lord that should be done in worship my friends pouring out ourselves in the presence of god pouring out our hearts in the presence of god when we pour out our hearts we empty ourselves we pour out ourselves in the presence of god we empty ourselves when we empty ourselves god fills us with his spirit god fills us with his word god fills us with his presence that's a wonderful experience from this incidents of divine visitation in the life of joshua we learn that we need to have this wonderful experience of humble worship that's why paul also said in the book of romans chapter 12 verse 1 we need to present our bodies as living sacrifices and that is a reasonable ministry reasonable service he said yes it is a reasonable ministry and to me when i present myself uh, as living sacrifice in the presence of god it is a reasonable ministry to me when you do that it is a reasonable ministry to you my friend humble worship uh, is a great experience uh, which leads you into victory when samuel samuel was praying he was also offering some burnt offerings uh, to the lord and those people were fasting and praying those people were uh, drawing water and pouring out uh, that water before the lord symbolical of uh, presenting themselves uh, pouring out themselves and finally what happened the first book of samuel 7th chapter verse 10 Now as Samuel was offering up the burnt offering the Philistines drew near to battle against Israel but the Lord thundered with a loud thunder upon the Philistines that day and so confused them that they were overcome before Israel you see here they had a victory it was not because they were able to fight against their enemy but God gave them victory because they were so humble in the presence of God they humbled themselves in the presence of God in worshiping him friends if you are humble in worshiping that leads you to victory in your life we have our own battles my friends we have our own battles battles in our health area battles in our financial area battles in our uh, uh family relationships uh, battles in our workplaces uh, battles uh, in our neighborhood uh, battles uh, with the present uh, uh, covid-19 situation yes we have many battles in our lives if you want to be victorious uh, in your battles uh, you need to learn this principle from this divine vis- visitation that is uh, humble worship pour yourself uh, in the presence of god 
pour out yourself as a drink offering in the presence of God so that you can be victorious if you look into the 15th verse of the key scripture Joshua 5 15 then the commander of the Lord's army said to Joshua take your sandal off your foot for the place where you stand is holy and Joshua did it so did so when Joshua had that visitation the the commander of the armies of the Lord said to Joshua this is a holy place remove your sandals Joshua when you walk into the presence of god you need to leave that filth before you get into the presence of god that's what the commander of the armies of the lord were was was saying to joshua you need to remove your sandals you need to leave that filth you need to remove that filth from your life to have a holy walk in the presence of god the second principle is holy walk you need to walk holy we have a faith walk my friends as the children of god we have faith walk we are walking in faith and as we are walking in faith we need to understand that we need to walk holy we need to have this holy walk in the presence of god holy walk in our lives so that we can be mighty witnesses on behalf of the lord to the people before us the book of ephesians speak a lot about this walk If you look into the 5th chapter of the book of uh, Ephesians uh, we see scripture says that uh, we need to walk in uh, love and we need to walk in the light of God and we need to walk in wisdom 5th chapter of the book of Ephesians uh, speaks uh, at length about uh, our faith walk we need to walk holy in the presence of god that's why the armies the commander of the armies of the lord asked joshua to remove that filth before he gets into the presence of god in the book of ephesians chapter 4 verse 1 says like this therefore the i therefore the prisoner of the lord beseech you to walk worthy of the calling you have a calling and i have a calling on our lives I'm not talking about uh, the calling of God uh, in leaders lives but uh, the calling of uh, God yeah, on every child of God you have a calling and I have a calling in the first epistle of Peter Peter says like this uh, you are called from darkness into marvelous light God called you from darkness into marvelous light once upon a time you were in darkness and God called you from that darkness into his marvelous light and god has a purpose in calling you god called you from that darkness to his marvelous light so that you can proclaim his praises that is the purpose of god in calling you and that calling is on you and that calling is on me this is not a specific call for leadership my friends as a child of god every child of god has this calling on him or on her so you need to feel that calling and you need to walk worthy of that calling you need to walk worthy god call you and you need to walk worthy of that calling you need to proclaim god's praises from your life from your words from your testimony from all the areas of your life you need to proclaim god's attributes and that is the calling you have on your life and you need to walk worthy of that calling if you look into philippians chapter 1 verse 27 only let your conduct be worthy of the gospel of christ we need to be worthy of the gospel worthy of the word of god word of god is something like a mirror we always use mirrors mirror shows the real picture of us and the word of god is like that the word of god shows us the real our real life see your life situations i may be looking good before so many people i may be looking good before the church i may be looking good before my family but and when i meditate on the word of god when i look into the word of god the word of god shows me what i am the word of god shows me how i am so i need to rectify myself when i look into the word of god so i need to walk worthy of the word of god and you need to walk worthy of uh, the word of god in your life you need to walk worthy of your calling you need to walk worthy of uh, the word of god 
and in the first book of Thessalonians chapter 2 verse 12 reads like this you would walk worthy of God who calls you into his own kingdom and glory you need to walk worthy of God sometimes when our children go away from the ways of the Lord or when we when our children commit some mistakes we tell them to walk worthy of the family walk worthy of the father walk worthy of the parents but here we are the children of God we need to walk worthy of our God a God is holy and we need to walk worthy of our holy God walking worthy of our calling walking worthy of the word of God the gospel of Christ and walking worthy of our God it's a holy walk this visitation of Joshua shows us the second principle that we need to have this holy walk so that we can be victorious in our faith life the humble worship and holy walk the third principle we can draw from this incident is seen in Joshua 6th chapter verse 2 and the Lord said to Joshua see I have given Jericho into your hand its king and the mighty men of valor that was the first battle that they were facing they were getting into the battle against the city of Jericho. So before they, they get into the battle against the city of Jericho, God was speaking to Joshua. Joshua, see. Joshua, see. I have given Jericho into your, into your hand. I have given its king into your hand. I have given all the mighty men of valor of that city into, you, into your hand. Now, Joshua was getting into battle against this city. And we know how that battle was won in the city of Jericho. It was all done by God. So we need to understand that this is a heavenly warfare. This is not a physical warfare, my friends. This is a heavenly warfare. God said to Joshua, See Joshua, I have given this city into your hand. Even before getting into the battle, Joshua got the message that he won the battle. Joshua got the message that he won the king. He won all the mighty warriors of the city. But the principle is that Joshua and the children of Israel had to get into the battle. They needed to face the battle. When they stand there in the battle, God will fight on behalf of them. That's the principle we need to learn in our lives. Many times uh, we feel that uh, we want to stay back uh, and uh, we want God to fight, fight the battle. Yes, God will fight the battle, but you need to stand in the battlefield. Joshua, I will fight the battle and I will give the city to your hand. I will give the king into your hand. I will give all the mighty warriors uh, into your hand. But you need to go into the battle. You need to go into the battle. My friends, if you go into the battle, the battle belongs to the Lord. If you go and stand in the battle, the battle belongs to the Lord. Even when David went into the battle against Goliath, David said, the battle is of the Lord. You need to stand there in the battle. In the book of Ephesians, for the first two chapters, speak about our inheritance in the Lord. Those cha chapters tell us that we have already been given our inheritance. Yes, it is true. Our inheritance has already been given to us, my friends. And if you look into Ephesians chapter 6, verse 12, the scripture says that our, our warfare is not a physical warfare. For we do not wrestle against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against the rulers of the darkness of the sage, against spiritual hosts of wickedness in the heavenly places. Yes, our warfare is heavenly warfare, spiritual warfare. When you get into that battle, God will fight against your enemies on behalf of you. But you need to stand in the battle. And God gives us the his full armor, God's full armor. In this armor, we have a helmet, a helmet of salvation. We have the breastplate, breastplate of righteousness. We have a belt, the belt of truth. We have shoes, the shoes of preparedness of the gospel. The shield, shield of faith. 
we have a sword sword of the spirit uh, that is uh, the word of god see all this is uh, called the armor of god the full armor of god god gave us that word, god gave us uh, that full armor to us but if you are really saved you have that uh, helmet of salvation it protects you and it gives you victory my friend and if if you receive god's righteousness that god's righteousness can be your breastplate it is not your righteousness and my righteousness our self righteousness is considered as grimy rags in the side of god so we need to have god's righteous righteousness in our lives and that will be the breastplate in our lives the belt of truth and shoes of preparedness of the gospel preparedness to preach the gospel preparedness to testify and there is a shield of faith oh we are totally protected totally protected helmet is there breastplate is there a belt is there shoes are there and if any area is left there is a wonderful shield everything is protected that's why it is called the full armor of god when you look into this full armor of god i would like you to observe two particular things in this full armor all these things in the full armor are defensive the helmet the breastplate the belt the shoes the shield all these are defensive there is only one weapon that is offensive that is the sword the sword of the spirit that is uh, the word of god my friend all these things all the your salvation your righteous god's righteousness in your life uh, your belt of truth uh, and preparedness of the gospel that are shoes uh, and your shield of faith uh, all those things uh, protect you but uh, in order to fight against the enemy you need to have your sword that sword is the word of god you need to have this sword in your hand that's why when god commissioned joshua to be the leader of the children of israel he said to joshua you need to meditate on the word of god day and night and then you will be prosper you will prosper in your, in all of your ways my friend you need to understand that you need to meditate on the word of god day and night so that you can prosper in all of your ways so that you can be victorious in all of your ways the first thing is you need to have this defensive weapon in your hand so that uh, you can fight against the enemy the second thing i want to tell you about this armor of god is uh, from uh, your head to toe everything is covered but i want to tell you that your back is not covered you should not show your back to your enemy you should not flee away you should not flee away you need to fight the battle you need to stand in the battle that's why when uh, god spoke uh, uh you bought this armor of god there the scripture says you need to stand firm you should not uh, turn back you should not uh, show your back to the enemy you need to be you need to be so strong in your faith standing firm and fighting the battle that's what uh, the word of god says to you my friend if you do that uh, you will be victorious heavenly warfare you are not fighting against uh, flesh and blood my friend and joshua was told by god your battle is already won i have given you the city into your hand i have given you the king into your hand i have given you all the mighty warrior into your hand you the, your battle is already won but you need to stand there and you need to fight against the enemy do you need to fight against the defeated enemy because the enemy was already defeated in his mind because god already told to joshua that the enemy is defeated so is the case with us my friends our enemy was defeated 2000 years ago on the cross of calvary i praise god for that our enemy is defeated in the cross of calvary and in the book of colossians if you look into second chapter verse 12 through 15 the scripture says that when jesus was crucified he fought our battle and he he disarmed satan and he defeated satan in the in a in the cross and he made a public spectacle of our our defeated enemy i praise god for that hallelujah our 
our enemy is defeated all that we need to do is we need to stand in the battle we need to be ready to fight the battle so that god can fight on behalf of us our warfare is heavenly warfare you can be victorious if you stand there believing that your battle is already won my friend three principles from this incident of this divine visitation in the life of joshua first principle is humble worship you need to pour out yourself in the presence of god empty yourself so that god can fill you with his spirit his word and his presence the second principle is holy walk you need to walk holy in the presence of god you need to walk worthy of his calling you can you need to walk worthy of his word and you need to walk worthy of him so that you can glorify through your faith walk and the third principle is a heavenly warfare we all have warfare in our lives we all have battles in our lives and uh, this is a heavenly warfare we need to stand firm fighting again is the ba- again is our enemy but uh, you need to believe that uh, your enemy is a defeated enemy when you really believe that your enemy is a defeated enemy you can stand firm and uh, you can boldly go against the enemy and win the battle and be victorious uh, for the glory of god my friend humble worship holy walk and uh, heavenly warfare receive these principles into your heart apply those principles to your life so that you can be victorious in your personal battles so that you can be a mighty witness unto the lord and be a blessing to many people through your life bring glory to god through your life god bless you may this word of god be a blessing in your life be victorious in your life and be a wonderful testimony on behalf of the lord and bring glory to god god bless you my friend